This is the Pythonic Accountant, and today we're going to walk through the process of creating an environment in Miniconda and installing a couple of libraries. The first library we're going to install is one called Jupyter Lab. That's going to be the environment that we're going to use for most of the coding. The uh, second library is called Pandas, which we're going to be using very heavily for any finance or accounting type of work or analysis. And then there's a third library we're going to install called XLRD, which is an Excel reader. And that's used to allow the Pandas library to be able to read in Excel files. So first to create an environment, we'll do conda create. And then we're going to name the environment myenv. That's just kind of a nice environment name to be able to do. And then hit enter to go ahead and start. And there we go. Our environment is created. So to activate this environment, uh, and, and by the way, we are in the Anaconda prompt, and uh, to refresh, to get to that prompt, you hit the Windows key and type Miniconda, and then click on the Anaconda prompt. So now that we've created this environment, we need to activate it. So we're going to type Conda Activate My ENV. Now to <clears throat> add a new library, I'm going to check my notes real quick from uh, the guide on uh, docs.conda.io. So to add a package, we're going to do conda install dash n my env, and then we're going to scipy is not one we're installing today, but this is how we can uh, install a specific package. So we'll do conda install dash n my env, and let's just do Jupyter Lab pandas xlrd, and let's see what happens. And yes, so this might take a few minutes, but what this is doing is uh, even though I only gave it three packages, each of those packages may have underlying requirements, meaning it, they rely on other packages in order to be able to be effective and useful. So what this is doing is it's going through and determining what are all of the underlying packages that need to be uh, downloaded and installed in order to make those three packages work that I gave it. Another thing that's really helpful with the Miniconda environment is it will look to make sure that the packages that have underlying requirements, that there's no conflicting versions. So say one package has a requirement for package B uh, for version 2, we want to make sure that if the other package has a requirement for uh, package B, that we're still using version 2 and not changing versions and messing up our packages. So hopefully that'll work out with no problem. While this is installing, I'll flip over and show a little bit more about the Miniconda documentation. It's really well documented, so if you're looking to understand a little bit more about how to use Miniconda and Anaconda, uh, under here, Managing Environments, there's a lot of really good content about how to create your environments and use them. And the reason why best practices usually say to use an environment and create your own virtual environment as we are doing is it allows you to only include the packages that you need in that environment. If you are using uh, multiple packages for one project and then you add more packages for another project, all of a sudden your environment ends up having a whole bunch of packages that take up a lot of space and if you try and share your project, it can cause problems. So, you know, it, it might not make a lot of sense at this point to you, but uh, trust me, it, it makes things a lot easier. So it looks like we are completed. So let's now test this out and make sure we've got the uh, packages that we think we need. So first we're gonna kick off Jupyter Lab, which is, like I said, my favorite coding environment. So since we're already in the environment, because it says my ENV, I'm gonna type in Jupyter Space Lab and what this is going to do is kick off uh, the web browser. And now we are in our Internet Explorer. Usually I like to use Chrome, but it kicked us in Internet Explorer, so we'll start here and see what happens. And, oh, thank you. Uh, this is not a threat. We are good to go. Got it. Now let's see if we can get this up and running. And I think Internet Explorer doesn't like me, so... We're going to go actually over and see if we can load it up here in Chrome. And there we go. So let's select this environment. 
And awesome. Now we are in Jupiter Lab. Let's uh, see if we're in the correct environment here. Hopefully we are. Let's start with hello world. That's good. And let's import pandas as PD. And that worked. So now we actually have access to the pandas. So we'll show you in another video how to actually use it and start importing uh, files. Let's just make sure XLRD is in there as well. And there you go. So this is uh, Jupyter Lab, and this is the environment we're going to use for pretty much all the rest of the videos from here on out.